Now, before I shoot this, I just want to show you how I am aiming. Right now, my starting diamond is 3.5, and I'm aiming through diamond 1, that top rail. Then next, I'm going to aim from 3 through diamond 0.7, and then I'm going to aim from diamond 2.5 through diamond 0.4 on that top rail again. And these are actually my fast speed numbers, but don't confuse that with like a power break shot. This isn't 100% power. This is firm power, about 75%, really hitting it smooth, but not actually overpowering the ball. So there's a bit more information about this shot that I want to deliver to you that are some warnings and some other things. Now, first of all, I had mentioned that these numbers are actually my fast speed numbers. I find the fast speed numbers slightly more reliable. However, I have a video that I did last night of the medium speed numbers. I'll run through these a little faster. 3.5 through 1.1. We have 3 through 0.8, 2.5 through 0.5. If you continue the 0.3 increment, 2 should shoot through 0.2, but you can't because it's going to clip the edge of the pocket. Uh, you might be able to do it on a billiards table. However, here I'm going to also shoot 2 through 0.5, and I'm going to load up a tip of English on the outside, and that's going to get it to wrap around. And as usual, you can get these at poolometry.com along with my free aim with speed bank shot manual and my free decimal diamond markers. But I want to focus on a part of this shot chart, and that's the vanishing point line. I'm going to blow it up here, and I'm going to put it next to the commonly thought idea of a three to one ratio for the shot. That's commonly taught. You hear it everywhere. But here is the vanishing point for the three to one ratio. You can see it's much closer to the table. And I think that's wrong. I think the vanishing point is further out. So what we end up with is not a three to one ratio. In fact, the 2.5 to 0.5 is about five to one, three to 0.8, actually 0.75 would be four to one and 3.5 to 1.1. That's pretty close to three to one. But now let me run through a couple other warnings and shooting options for this shot. I'm not sure if you noticed, but in the first video, the balls were closer to the rail with the fast speed numbers. So when I did my stop center ball shot, the cue stayed here and there was a clear path from the third rail for the object ball to the pocket. But when I shot my medium speed numbers, I had them further out. So when I did a stop shot, the ball stayed right in that zone. And on that last shot, I had to snag the ball out of the way. This shot has a tendency to hit the cue ball. The cue ball tends to stay in that third rail path. So make sure if you think it's going to be in the way, make sure you add a tiny bit of top or a tiny bit of bottom. So let's say I'm on my medium speed line, three through 0.8, and let's say I put an accidental amount of English on the ball, inside English in this case. If I add inside English, it's gonna throw the ball offline. It's actually gonna hit over here, and guess what's gonna happen? Instead of having that double rail action at this end, it's gonna be at risk for pocketing in this corner, cross corner. Now that's kinda of cool because you might, see this shot and you might not be thinking cross corner because it's like too steep for a cross corner shot but you might have just learned hey if i put some inside english that actually can pocket cross corner and you might change your shot altogether instead of taking this shot as is so there are two more shots that are possible but they are less predictable first is if you continue your 0.3 change up the rail from 3.5 to 4 we can try at 1.4 1.5 typically pockets in the corner or really rattles around the jaws but i'm going to try 1.4 here now the problem is when it comes into this zone it has to just barely miss miss the tip and get this perfect rail action back and you're asking a lot in that case but i'll give it a try here See, it got stuck in the, the jaws there. Let me just try one more time. You can get it to go, but it is very unreliable. Typically, that's what happens. It runs a little long. Give it a try if it works on your table, but it doesn't work very well on mine. 
And in the other extreme, I had shown how you could add English to the two through 0.5 line. You can sometimes get it to go even tighter than this, but keep in mind, you can't start cheating the angle too much because if you add English here, you're going to put it in the pocket. It's gonna get thrown offline. So you still have to aim around 0.5, maybe a touch over, but any more is really asking a lot. And you're gonna load up on outside English to try to get it to kick over and around. Hey, I got that one. And indeed, I find this shot from four unreliable, but it's possible to make up this end of the table with a lot of English. But you don't always have ball in hand, so let's say that ball is where it is, and you've got a random object ball position. What I'm gonna do is analyze the table to see where it is, so I'm gonna look at my medium speed lines. I'm clearly beyond that. In fact, my 0 .5, 2 0.5, 2.5, I might be to my speed line. No, I'm beyond that as well. This is beyond what I really want to shoot, but let's say I want to try it anyway. I'm going to try to cut it into that 0.5 line. I'm really nervous about a double hit as the cue goes this way, but we'll see. And if you're interested, you can use this as a kicking system as well, but this is very, very uh, susceptible to English on the kick. For some reason, if you put any English on this ball, it's going to mess it up. I'm gonna be on my three through point eight line. I'm using a, a stripe ball as my object ball so you can see when I put English on the ball. I'm gonna actually just put a tiny bit, this is like a quarter tip of English, I'm putting inside English. You're gonna see it spin off and watch it go wide, right? So that English took it. If I do a quarter tip of English in the other direction, I'm probably gonna pock it. So you've got to be really careful on your kick to be a very pure hit in order to make it. So that's how I shoot my three rails in the side shot. And if you're just discovering me, this is one of the shots in my 25 shot library called Aim With Speed, where I use the same sort of pattern, where we start with a benchmark spot and then I use incremental adjustments in order to try to memorize the standard track lines.